Hello again, and thank you for taking a moment with Mel. Today, we're going to talk about the justice system in the United States. The poem, No Take Backs, explores several themes. In the book, The Deepest Well, we learn that early adversity impacts the brain's pathways and is associated with Vigilance, poor impulse control, increased fear, and an inhibition in executive functioning. Some of our young people are exposed to so much at such a young age. We see it expressing itself not only in our schools, but also in our justice system. I was listening to a podcast with a man who is now 39 years old. He has been in prison since he was 19 years old. He had so much happen to him at such a young age. He was put in the foster care system when he was less than one year old. His first memory of a traumatic event kind of put itself to the surface when he was thinking about the puppy that the family had recently gotten and how that puppy was being potty trained to be in the house. And he thought back to when he was three years old and he was being potty trained. What he remembered was when he wasn't able to have his urine go directly into the urinal in the toilet, his face was put in the urine that was not only, only on the toilet seat, but if the urine fell on the ground, his face was put in it and he was made to lick it up with his tongue. That is his first memory of trauma that he experienced and it was three years old and no doubt trauma occurred to him probably from the time he was less than one even going up to that stage and it continued throughout his life when he was nine years old he was raped by an uncle when he was 10 years old he remembers that was the first time that he self-mutilated. By the time he was 15, he was on antipsychotics. And when he was 19, he killed not only his foster mother, but his foster father. He is currently serving two life sentences plus 99 years. According to the CDC, in the United States, adults have at least one traumatic experience overall. When we look at inmates, that number increases to 97%. In regards to what it costs to house the prison population in the United States, on average, it is $46,000 per prison inmate in the United States. Research shows that we currently have at least 1.5 million incarcerated people in the United States prisons. If you multiply that 46,000 by 1.5 million, you will come up with a $69 billion annual revenue. Brian Stevenson, lawyer and social justice activist, said that slavery didn't end in 1865. It just evolved. The last stanza of the poem, No Take Backs, talks about two Georges. George Stinney Jr. is the first George that we talk about. He was the youngest person to be executed in the United States. He was 14 years old. He was executed in the electric chair and he weighed 
90 pounds. The second George that it refers to is George Floyd from the poem, No Take Back. The brain doesn't finish developing until 25. So many important decisions take place by then. Some great, some not so great. Going back in time is not an option. Our arms should move to embrace, not to let go. We should fight harder, not give up. We say that they should pull themselves up but chaos and vision rarely coexist. If you think you will die before 18, how do you dream of 30? What about those who did nothing wrong? Alibis verified, not accepted. Audio heard, not accepted. Video seen, not accepted. Can you blame them for running? Can you blame them for trying to get away? Having more hope in moving than standing still. Fear has a mind of its own. Every business is created to yield profit, tangible or intangible. How do you increase tangible profit when your business is prison? George's conviction at 14 was later vacated, but that was after his execution. 75 years later, another George was murdered. Have we really overcome?